Now let's get into the different approaches to getting a list. First, you can go out and find a list. You can start by just doing a Google search. Here I looked for a list of architects. This is what popped up. A list of architecture firms provided freely by an architecture association. Whoever your target customer is, you can do this. You can find a list of accountants, naturopaths, software startups, etc. It gets a bit complicated when your list has something sensitive like people with certain diseases. So for those, you may need to actually buy a list. Here's another example of a free list of SaaS companies that could potentially buy your product. You can even get detailed information like the number of employees and the company's specific location. Another way to get your list is just to buy it outright from some organizations such as a list broker. This is the simplest, most straightforward approach. Again, ask yourself the question, why spend time and money on lead generation if I can just buy the leads? One of the largest suppliers of purchase list is the Info Group. You may know them by one of their sub-brands, such as InfoUSA. Here you can see some of the criteria you can use to build your list, such as location, housing information, and financial data. You can achieve a high degree of granularity for precise targeting. This will prevent you from wasting money marketing to people who will never buy from you. Here are some even more specific lists. You can specifically target dentists if you're selling dental tools or dental marketing services. Other lists are built around key triggers, such as bankruptcy. You can target people who went bankrupt, as this may, bankruptcy may trigger those people to start looking for a product like yours. You could also target people who moved into a new home, as they may be particularly interested in your furniture or perhaps your insurance. It's important to remember that the customer journey usually begins with some sort of trigger that happens in the buyer's life that instigates the buying process. The buying process does not begin with awareness, it begins with triggers. If you market to them when that trigger happens, you are highly likely to get the sale. Dun & Bradstreet is another popular supplier of marketing lists. Hoover's is one of their sub-brands. Here you can see other suppliers who are listed as competitors of one another, such as Owler, Equifax, Infogroup, Experian, TransUnion, Traxon, PitchBook, and InsideView. That was an overview of some of the biggest list suppliers, but in niche markets, you may want to consider niche list providers. These specialized lists often perform better. Pipe Candy, for example, provides a list of e-commerce sellers. Here, you can segment the different types of e-commerce sellers by technology. Specialized list sellers often have higher quality lists because they understand the niche market better. There are lots of people out there trying to sell lists. I often get email solicitations from people in India, for example, to buy lists related to my industry. Don't treat those emails as spam, as I have had some success relying on these lists for marketing campaigns. In some ways, they are doing a favor by bringing specialized lists to your attention without you needing to go seek them. Remember to negotiate. There are lots of people out there trying to sell your lists, and you don't owe them anything. Consider getting prices from multiple suppliers and use those prices to give you negotiating power. If their list is already built, the marginal cost to sell to you should not be very high, so they will have a lot of room for negotiating price. 